Hi everyone, my name is Sahil Agarwal, and I'm going to be co-hosting this video with my partner Asan Ahmad on the psychosocial development of adolescence and how HIV and AIDS can influence that psychosocial development. So let's jump right in. In many parts of the world, only childhood and adulthood are seen as distinct phases of life. Adolescents, as defined by the World Health Organization and the United Nations, are those individuals aged 10 through 19 years old. Though different healthcare organizations and societies may define adolescents differently because of societal, cultural, and economic conditions, the term adolescent in this lecture will refer to the above mentioned age group. But please note that due to different resources, some of the ages might fluctuate. There are currently 1.2 billion adolescents in the world, making up 18% of the world's population. 88% of adolescents live in the developing world, and more than half of the world's adolescents live in South Asia, East Asia, and the Pacific region. Previously, much focus was given to preventing communicable diseases of childhood. Significant improvement in that regard has come about, and now leaders globally are recognizing the need to address and focus on the second decade of life, adolescence, in order to sustain and consolidate the achievements made during the first decade of the children's lives. Many changes occur during adolescence, the most obvious being the physical ones. Pediatric and other medical references tend to focus on these physical changes and this information is readily available. For this reason, the physical changes that occur during puberty and adolescence will not be discussed here. Rather, the focus will be on the other developmental changes that occur, the cognitive and emotional changes. These develop more insidiously and healthcare providers may be less familiar with them. In addition, Healthcare providers may be deceived by the physical appearances of adolescents, which are not necessarily proportionate to their cognitive or emotional development. Now, in terms of cognitive development, adolescence is a sensitive and critical period for both normal and maladaptive patterns of development. This period was formally described as the time of transition from concrete operational thinking to formal, logical, abstract thinking, including development in reasoning and judgment. New perspectives emphasize that adolescent thinking is a function of societal, social, emotional, and cognitive processes. There is a growing evidence that the brain continues to mature throughout adolescence and into early adulthood. During this period, brain, behavioral, and cognitive development systems mature at different rates, causing adolescence to be a period of increased vulnerability and adjustment. Two areas are specifically relevant to understanding adolescent psychosocial development. First, brain development in this period is mostly in the regions that have an important role in regulation of behavior and emotion and to the perception and evaluation of risk and reward. Significant changes include myelination and synaptic pruning, which increase the efficiency of information processing and enhance transmission of brain messages. Also, please note, I have defined these anatomical parts below, so in case you need to reference, they are, they are listed below in the review guide. Areas associated with more basic functions, including the motor and sensory areas, mature in the early teen years, while the prefrontal cortex, the reasoning area of the brain, and an important area for controlling impulses, emotions, and executive functioning, appears to reach adult dimension in the early 20s, with girls developing earlier than boys. Executive functions include the ability to inhibit impulses, weigh consequences of decisions, prioritize, strategize, long-term planning, decision-making, self-evaluation, self-regulation, and the coordination of effect and cognition. Second, Changes in arousal and motivation brought on by pubertal maturation precede the development of regulatory competence. The brain's reward center, the ventral striatum, also is more active during adolescence than in adulthood. 
This creates a gap between the adolescent's affective experience and the ability to regulate arousal and motivation. While the adolescent brain continues to strengthen its connections between reasoning and emotion-related regions, each adolescent progresses at varying rates in developing their ability to think and their own view of the world. Adolescent thinking becomes more multidimensional, and they are better to contemplate hypothetical situations and the relationship between varied actions or decisions and outcomes, but decision-making remains susceptible to emotions. Adolescent cognitive development can be characterized into three stages, early, middle, and late. In early adolescence, the use of formal logical operations is mainly focused on schoolwork and in-home environments. This includes questioning authority and societal standards. There is a development of enhanced ability to verbalize thoughts and views, starting with those related to their own life. These include choices regarding engaging in sports, spear, uh, excuse me, peer groups, dress, and parental rules that adolescents think should be changed. At this stage, they may be unable to perceive long-term outcomes of current decision-making. In middle adolescence, more complex thinking processes are used. The focus expands to include more philosophical and futuristic concerns. Middle adolescents tend to question and analyze more extensively in order to form their own code of ethics, identity, and possible future goals, which may begin to influence relationships with others. They may perceive future implications, but may not apply it in decision-making. In late adolescence, complex thinking processes are used to focus on less self-centered concepts, as well as personal decision-making. Adolescents may think about more global concepts such as justice, history, politics, and patriotism. They develop idealistic views on specific topics or concerns and may debate and develop intolerance of opposing views. But again, keep in mind, this is all dependent upon where the adolescent is, as environmental factors really do make an impact. They tend to focus on making career decisions and think about their emerging role in society. That's pretty much common across the board. At this stage, they are able to think things through independently and weigh consequences before making decisions. Understanding cognitive development during this period is helpful in understanding age differences in judgment and decision-making, risk-taking, sensation-seeking, and also why adolescents can be time of increased risk for the onset of wide range of emotional and behavioral problems, including depression, violent delinquency, and substance abuse. Now, please keep in mind that adolescents in areas of developing countries mature differently, right? Arguably, they mature faster because they observe and live through devastating obstacles. Therefore, we must be cognizant of the fact that these above assessments are grand scope assessments. Each country has a culture, each community has a culture, and each adolescent has his or her own personal story. Therefore, we must be cognizant of the fact that understanding development is a fluid and dynamic maturation that is greatly influenced by environment. Now let's focus on emotional development. Adolescence has been quaintly described as that awkward period between sexual maturation and the attainment of adult roles and responsibilities. It is a time of great change with concurrent but asynchronous physical, cognitive, and emotional development. Adolescents experience many changes in how they interact with their family, peers, society, and themselves. They move from an idealistic opinion of their parents during childhood into increased conformity to peer groups' expectations and values to the development of their own personal values and principles as they progress through early, middle, and late adolescence. This movement mirrors a shift in emotional support from family to peers and then to self and intimate partners. This is not to say there is or should be separation from family, as healthy emotional development is highly dependent on continued positive interaction with parents throughout. But let's think for a moment. Do these developing adolescents, specifically in areas like Swaziland, have the convenience of highly supportive parents? 
As previously mentioned, emotional and cognitive development are inextricably linked as brain development progresses throughout adolescence into early childhood. Cognition has a significant impact on expression of emotions, and conversely, emotion and situational contexts have a significant impact on adolescents' behavioral choices. Emotional development during adolescence involves learning to recognize and master the control of emotions experienced so as to facilitate functioning within expected societal norms, and again, dependent upon community. Emotions serve many important functions, including motivating positive behavior, achieving goals, providing information about self, and facilitating relationships, including intimacy. It involves self-discovery and self-characterization to acquire a specific role in society, which is facilitated by the enhanced abstract thought acquired during adolescence. There is evidence to support an association between cognitive maturation and increased regulation of emotional behavior. However, it has been proposed that these changes are non-linear, unlike development during childhood and adulthood. The subcortical limbic system, including the amygdala, is important in the processing of emotions and emotional responses to social stimuli whereas the prefrontal cortex is responsible for the cognitive control or regulation of emotional behavior. An imbalance model has been put forward that proposes that an imbalance between the development of these two systems may be related to the development of psychopathology. Sensitivity to rewards seems to peak in adolescence and may have a positive impact such as academic or athletic achievements or negative influence with thrill-seeking through use of substances or other high-risk behaviors. The incent this incentive response suggests behaviors may be defined from a motivational perspective. Adolescents who fail to learn how to modify their own emotions may become impulsive with progression to delinquent behavior or may become alienated both from peers and family, leading to parental conflict, relationship challenges, and an increased risk of depression, substance abuse, and suicide risk. Therefore, having programs to empower adolescents and providing a safe space for emotional and cognitive development through letter writing can only support their development. So now that Asan has given a uh, good overview of the cognitive and the emotional developmental aspects of adolescence, um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time to talk about the psychosocial impact of HIV on, and AIDS on adolescence. So all of what we've been talking before in, in this video is kind of um, to lead up to this one slide here, uh, which talks about how our adolescents who are either HIV positive or who have been impacted by HIV in some way, which means that either they've been orphaned because of a parent or both parents who've passed away due to HIV infection or who are living with, with uh, parents who are HIV positive. Those, those are kind of two ways to classify um, vulnerable adolescents or adolescents who have been impacted by HIV and AIDS. How are these adolescents impacted within their communities due to that vulnerability status. Um, we know based on current research, um, and I will be posting um, a few papers that are, are really great overviews of some of the um, more general aspects of stigma and how that can influence um, development in children and adolescents, as well as some specific um, papers that I, you know, I'll talk about uh, a little bit later in this slide. Um, but what we can kind of generally understand is that stigma, social stigma, influences the development of adolescence. Remember, adolescence is a time for both cognitive and emotional growth. It's a time where um, neural connections are getting stronger. The brain is starting to develop further into adulthood. And it's really a time when the 
the adolescent uh, creates a greater sense of self and creates stronger uh, emotional bonds with uh, both friends and family. And stigma can, can really influence um, a lot of those aspects of that, that psychosocial development in adolescence. Um, as you know, we talked about earlier, um, some of the forms of social stigma in our first overview video. So I'm not going to talk about talk about those. But what um, what was actually found in a study that was done in China? Uh, this this study contained um, up to I think about 1,500 adolescents uh, and children in China who have been impacted by HIV and AIDS in some way. Um, not necessarily HIV positive, but um, children who have been um, orphaned by HIV and AIDS or children who are living with, with parents who are HIV positive, it was found that HIV-related stigma, the perception of HIV stigma, was actually associated to psychological problems um, in those adolescents. And um, in terms of you know what I mean by those, those psychological problems, um, I'm talking about higher levels of depression, higher levels of loneliness, uh, as well as uh, lower self-esteem or positive future expectations, uh, you know, low hopefulness about the future. Um, so, so really you can see that there are um, some rather critical um, effects that stigma has on the development of these adolescents and unless these adolescents recognize that they too have support systems that they're not lonely and that they have the potential for bright futures then they too can be meaningful contributors to their communities and they can live happy lives um, and and really that's really the the reason why we are here um, as an organization is because we want to provide both the support um, in terms of um, you know, having a role model, having a friend, having a an outlet for these adolescents, but also giving these adolescents the opportunity to come up with some sort of um, activity that they want to do within their communities um, to to really highlight that they too have bright futures and and um, you know hopefully hopefully all of this you know kind of ties together with our mission statement is is to really empower vulnerable adolescents um, towards bright futures because. There are a number of different um, psychological aspects that can be affected um, by the stigma of HIV and AIDS. And so once again, it's also important to have um, close family and um, close friend bonds. Um, and, you know, we're, we're hoping to achieve that close friend bond where um, our volunteers will form a, a good relationship with um, with their pen pal mentee over the course of um, over a year. And so we're really hoping that um, that'll form a strong foundation for um, the, the development of these, of these adolescents. Um, there have also been, um, you know, I was just reading a paper the other day and they were talking about how, uh, you know, the greatest way to combat stigma is, uh, is education. Um, and so there, there aren't many interventions um, to combat stigma, but um, the interventions that have been done, and this is not just for HIV and AIDS, this is this is for other um, conditions as well. There, there have been studies about obesity, there have been studies about um, uh, yeah, psychological issues, but you know, and, and of course, this HIV and AIDS falls under under this this stigma development as well. But these interventions really try to educate young people about the condition. And so that's part of the reason why we have this webinar training series, because we want to educate our volunteers about all aspects of HIV, um, HIV infection, um, so, that, so that you as an individual, those, those volunteers as well as those who are, who are watching uh, the videos, are going to understand that, that stigma is, is you know, a big, a big uh, contributor to a lot of the negative aspects of um, adolescent development. Um, and so it's really important that we all work together to help reduce that social stigma. And that's part of the reason why we have our mentorship program here. I also wanted to highlight another study uh, that was done in sub-Saharan Africa with uh, individuals who were orphaned uh, due to AIDS. So these are adolescents. 
um, who've, been, who've been orphaned by AIDS, so they've been impacted by HIV and AIDS. And it was found that um, there are um, a number of different uh, forms of stigma that these adolescents experience. And uh, one of the big ones is, uh, for example, being bullied um, is, is really, really one of the large ones. Um, and so what the study found is that there was um, a lot, a, a very large association uh, between, um, you know, someone, someone who's been impacted by HIV and AIDS, who, who is a victim of bullying and stigma. There was an association between, between that and higher scores on depression, anxiety, um, peer problems, uh, post-traumatic stress, delinquency, uh, a lot of other psychological problems. So the idea is that the stigma and, and you know, bullying, which is uh, a, a form of that stigma, is going to potentially influence the psychological development of these adolescents. And, and once again, like the, the study um, that was done in China found is kind of yield similar results um, in, in an increase in the, in the number of psychological problems um, that these, these adolescents may experience. And so um, another important thing is that, that I found interesting from this, from this paper, which will also be posted, um, is that orphanhood by AIDS um, significantly, uh, it was a significantly associated to higher levels of depression. So we know uh, from, from these kinds of studies that there is a large amount of um, psychological or psychosocial developmental problems associated with AIDS-associated stigma. And with that, uh, both Asan and myself would like to uh, close up this video on the psychosocial development of adolescence and um, how uh, HIV and AIDS stigma might influence that development. Uh, I hope that this video was uh, insightful. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to uh, either shoot us an email uh, at volunteer at pendulumglobal.org. Uh, you can also post a, post a comment to the video. Uh, and for, for more information, for more videos, go ahead and check out www.pendulumglobal.org and visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash pendulumusa to get involved and know more.